I have a, a grandparent and a great-grandparent that were affected by Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease. Um, and so that, that's run in my family also, so it's very close to home and I've seen the, the devastating effects that that can have on people's lives and their families' lives. Yep, so it's Jake Aguirre. Uh, I'm a PhD student in Gary Shaw's lab at the University of Western Ontario. We're seeking to uh, develop a full structural and chemical understanding of this enzyme called Parkin, and obviously it has implications in Parkinson's disease. Uh, so individuals that have mutations in this uh, gene can develop uh, autosomal recessive Parkinsonism, so that's a genetically inherited form of Parkinson's disease. So we're trying to understand not only how this enzyme works in healthy individuals, but what goes wrong in uh, cases of Parkinson's disease where people have these mutations. But I think what's happening in the research is that there seems to be a kind of intersection coming of the genetic and sporadic forms of Parkinson's disease. And I think people are realizing that although the two diseases are different, they share a lot of common uh, causative effects. And so we think that there might be some kind of uh, convergence of a, of a certain problem in the cell that's causing both of these diseases. Right, so after we have some kind of small molecule that might activate or inhibit the enzyme's activity depending on what effect you're trying to get, then that's something that could be sent for further study by uh, clinicians to look at in animal models or maybe one day in, in humans. Uh, but we're really at the basic science level trying to find the, the atomic and molecular fundamentals of, of what's happening in the cell. So we're really thankful that there's organizations out there like Parkinson Canada that recognize the value and importance of that fundamental research uh, that's really at the basic science level, uh, lab bench research that can hopefully one day be translated into animal models and human models and be used in the clinic one day. Yeah, so I'm hoping that the donors understand really the value and significance of funding this kind of basic research uh, that is really relevant to, to helping understand the molecular basis of these diseases and this really gives all the ammunition that we need to help try and come up with new therapies uh, to be able to combine two of my passions, the science and the possibility of discovering something that would help people with these neuropathies is just really incredible and a great opportunity. Uh, yeah, so I'd like to thank all of the donors to Parkinson Canada for uh, the really generous uh, d donations that they've given to the organization and I want to assure them that we're definitely putting that, those funds to good use to try and come up with the best discoveries uh, towards developing a cure. So yeah, thank you. <laughs>